All right, Jason, appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Was going through all your highlights, and I completely forgot that you and Randy Moss were teammates. What was he like as a basketball player? Uh, he was pretty good, man. You know, everybody says like Chris Webber was like the first ones to catch all those passes, but but Moss, man, you could throw it anywhere. Or some games, you know, I'll just try to throw it where I knew he wasn't going to catch it. Yeah. But he would get them all. Because you're two guys from what, West Virginia, small town, right? Right. Is it kind of cool to see that you guys both are legends in your own field? Um, I think it's cool, I mean, because just for the simple fact, I know how much he worked at football and, and the same for me at basketball, but 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 I can honestly say if he worked at anything else other than football, he could have made it too. Do you think he would have been a basketball player? For sure, man. Like I said, whatever, whatever, whatever he chose to play, he would have been successful for sure. Because he was on a, a basketball camp with like KG, um, and he, he could legit play, right? He's one of the top players in the country? For sure, man. I, I, there's not too many more athletic people that's ever walked this planet. <laughs> and do you still stay, stay in touch to this day? Of course. He's got a little fishing thing going, you know. Uh, I got him some fishing videos coming soon. Okay, okay. So when you're playing with him, are you just trying to get him the ball? Because you were kind of always a willing passer. Well, I was a willing passer, but but he'd also rebound too. And he could he could rebound the ball too and take it the length of the court. Mm -hmm. But I think he knew if he got me the ball and, and he just filled the lane, he's getting the ball back. Yeah. Your high school games were always packed too. They were, they were. We were we were a pretty exciting team. Um, uh, looking back, I don't think we were that good. <laughs> And when you were in high school, at this point, did you know you were going to go to the NBA? Uh, I personally did. Um, yeah. I don't think anybody mm -hmm. else knew or, or nobody was trying to hear that, but mm -hmm. but that's all I knew, you know, that's what I was going to do. And you were doing ridiculous behind the back passes even during high school. Did coaches ever hesitate or kind of tell you to kind of chill out a little bit? All the time, man, all the time. But I wasn't trying to listen to none of that, you know, I just, because I mean, I, I, everything you've seen me do, I've, I've practiced, you know, I've worked yeah. on. so. So I don't think coaches could really, really say much. I mean, I don't know who was the second string, but I don't know, it probably dropped off drastically. Yeah, you're in high school and maybe a coach is telling you to chill out. Like, how are you just confident enough to just be like, no, I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing because it's working and it's gotten me to be this successful. Like I said, man, I practiced all that stuff, man. I spent hours upon hours doing it. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not wasting all those hours practicing and then not gonna do it, Yeah. you know? I heard a story that you wouldn't even shoot when you used to practice. You used to go and do just behind the back passes for two to three hours trying to hit an X on the wall. Yeah, is that true? It is true a little bit, you know. I mean, I shot a little bit, but but I'd rather definitely pass the ball mm -hmm. and, and try to find a partner that can shoot and I'll be rebounding and passing to him. Perfect. Yeah. One of your most iconic moments is the crossover against Gary Payton. Walk me through this. You get the steal, and then what are you doing from here? Well, well, if you can pause it. Yep. The play before that, I came down and I probably shot one from like 30 feet and made it. So people don't really see, they have no idea about that play. Mm -hmm. So this one was kind of was set up from the last play. Coming down and he had to come up on me because he was going to get it and it was just too late. As soon as he started leaning, I mean, if, if he wouldn't have tried to trip me, I think he might have fell forward. That's what I was going to ask. Did, so he tried to trip you after when he got when he got got. Well, that's what it looked like. Mm -hmm. but that's my man GP. He didn't try to trip me, man. What did he say though? Uh, he didn't say anything after that really, but before that, bro, I was scared to death. I won't lie. He was talking a lot, you know, uh, some things that I probably shouldn't say. Mm -hmm. But C. Webb and he were talking back and forth to one another. I wasn't saying anything because, like I said, I was scared. You know, it's the first <laughs> time I've seen this guy. And he's talking this, but after that, he seemed to show respect. Like he, he was in awe. I think he, even after the game, he said in the post game, like, just respect to him. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think, that. I think everybody, everybody's gonna get God at one point, right? Mm -hmm. Was this one of your I made it moments? Because he was one of the best defenders in the league, and immediately your rookie year, you're like, oh, I just crossed Gary Payton. You know, at, at the time, I really wasn't even thinking of it like that. You know, I didn't, I didn't. Like I said, I'm still shook, scared <laughs> a little bit. You know, I don't want, I don't want. Plus, a little bit of me wants to act like I've done it before. Yeah. But but inside, I was probably jumping for joy. And then when you were teammates, did you talk about it at all? Uh, it, it came up a couple times, but but you know he he's like you said, you know he he paid the respect and, and, and owned up to it. So it was, it, if he, if he was trying to be like a bully about it, or like oh no, it wasn't a good move, blah blah blah. I think it would have been a worse worse off time for him yeah. to have then. But but he was cool. Okay. Now the behind the back move against Philly. When did you know you were gonna do that? Uh, probably my 11th grade year in high school, um, just waiting on that stage. But, I mean, I've done that move in high, yeah, I did that move in high school for sure. Um, 
But really that move, I don't think it was that good because it really didn't fake Theo Ratliff out like I wanted it to. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think I think he probably should have blocked it. If we had, if we did that play again, he'd block it nine out of 10 times, I'll bet. What, but what made you break it out? Was there anything that Theo was doing, his stance, that made you say, all right, I'm gonna break it out now? No, not really, because it was just like, I mean, I was just trying to bait him to, to drop the pass off, really. Mm -hmm. And I probably still should have dropped the pass off, but I said, hey, I'm already halfway, I might as well go ahead. Where did you get your confidence from? Um, I think it just come from hours in the gym practicing. Like I said, all these moves you see, man, I've tried them before, so. Mm -hmm. Once I walk in the gym, I feel like I can do anything. Yeah. Did it surprise you at all, the buzz you had your rookie year? Like you were top five in jersey sales, it felt like everyone was talking about you. The, the buzz your rookie year, was it just something you expected or did it kind of take you off guard? No, for sure it took me off guard. I never, never expected anything like that. Um, but that's just, comes with my team, bro. It wasn't, everybody's like, it was me, 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 but it was like, everybody else was passing that thing too and, and catching and finishing and shooting threes and everybody had a little bit of flair, just some people had a little bit more. Yeah. Peja has a ridiculous behind that back pass. It's really famous. Chris Webber was a really underrated yeah. passer. That entire Blotica team. pass. Yes. There's like a whole montage on YouTube of just like the Sacramento Kings best passes. So that whole team was very flashy. I think who forget that. Those are the good old days. You also passed it to yourself. You did a similar move and then you did a lob against Golden State. Do you remember this? I do because it's against my uh, fellow West Virginian, Bimbo Coles, number 12. Okay. Um, it's kind of the same thing. I'm just trying to set them up with the behind the back for just to see what they're going to do, whether I can pass or shoot. And then when somebody can jump, you just, they got no chance on two on one. Yeah. Your handle, that's just another thing you work. Did you do anything specifically? Because everyone works on their handles, but it felt like you just were on another level when it came to it. Yeah, I did all kind of crazy things, man. I worked with gloves and everything like that. But, but like I said, I could go in the gym and be in there like six or seven hours, man, and never yeah. shoot, just dribble. Yeah. So, I mean. Hard work pays off, I think. Because I think some people would say Jason Williams has the best handles ever, Jamal Crawford, Kyrie. Where do you kind of rank yourself? Uh, I'm not one to rank myself, but I think Kyrie's got the best handle ever, man. To me, really? to me, just because he can he can get he can get to anywhere on the floor that he wants to get. He can get through cracks and crevices, you know, and he's fast and he can finish with either hand. Is he your favorite player to watch right now in the mm. NBA? No, Russell. I'm a Russell Westbrook guy. Yeah. Um, I'm a LeBron guy too. Um, I think LeBron's the best player still, uh, but Russell's my favorite for sure. He, I think he gets a bad rap, you know, he, you know, as long as he won and, and didn't score a point or didn't get a rebound or didn't get an assist, that's all he would care about. And I think a lot of people think that he, he's caring about the triple doubles and things like that, which he's not. He just wants to win and yeah. it just so happens gets a triple double. Yeah. And you've had moments against Kobe, you've had moments against Gary Payton, now in Iverson. Was there anyone that surprised you? Like you're like, oh wow. I can't believe I crossed this person or I faked them out. Even like you said, everyone has to get got eventually. Yeah. But was there anyone that stuck out like in particular? Um, I, I had to be Gary Payton. Yeah. But just because he's the the, the best one on one mm -hmm. point guard. Yeah. Defender slash scorer that's ever played to me. Yeah. When you were on the Grizzlies, you also had a moment against Philly where you faked out AI a little bit. And w so what is that? Was that just you faking a pass real quick? Oh, yeah, I think it was just like a fake bounce pass to Gasol. Yeah. Just to get, because he's always gambling for steals. And you kind of just were able to kind of get him to I think to so, just, just, just to get him to jump so I could get my shot off. Were you ever a scorer? No, not really. I mean, I, I could score, I think, you know, mm -hmm. just enough to help my team, but I, I would never be the guy to, to have to get you your buckets. Okay. Never that guy. I don't know what to call this. Is this a jump shot on Mike Bibby? <laughs> Is this a travel? No, it's not a travel. Okay, I, I ain't even seen it. No, it can't be a travel, can it? I don't know. I don't know the rules. You tell uh, me. I mean, they didn't call it I, what I do. I mean, I, I don't think it was a travel. I just jumped. Mm -hmm. Kept one more dribble, right? How do you even come up with this? I don't know. I, that's, that, <laughs> what? That, I, I don't know about that one there. I don't. I mean, I don't even see anybody over there that I was going to be able to pass it to, really. But you say you practice all the time. This entire interview, you told me you practice in the gym, all of these moves, and this is the one you just never practiced. Well, I mean, you know, I probably did a couple, couple of them. <laughs> did you ever break it out again? I don't think so. Nothing. Nothing to like. I don't even know what Bibby was doing. Like, why would he back up? <laughs> yeah, I don't get that either. I really don't get that at all. Yeah, I don't know, but hey. And where did you get the name White Chocolate from, by the uh, way? I think that came from somebody in, in Sacramento's uh, PR department. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people ask me all the time, does it bother me, this, that, and No, it doesn't bother me a bit, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, the, word, the word racism or anything like that is like 
so far from my vocabulary, yeah. you know, I mean, I just, I, I don't get into any of that, you know, I just, I just go out and hoop and, and people mm -hmm. talk what they want. You play with a lot of good players too, right? Like D-Wade, Shaq. Was there anyone that you wished you played with? That I didn't get to play yeah. with? Mm, man, I played with some good ones. Pro I mean, forever or just like- Ever. I, oh, ever. man, I'd love to play with Larry Bird. Yeah. Uh, Magic Johnson. A lot of these guys. I'm, like my my top five I, that I could be the sub want to be like, Magic would be the one, mm -hmm. uh, Jordan would be the two, LeBron would be the three, and Larry Bird would be the four, and Shaq would be the five. Yeah. How did the, the, your relationship with Shaq start? Because he's always been a big fan of yours. I think it started like back before I got drafted. I, I used to live here in Orlando before the, my draft, and I worked out here. So we played pickup ball together, and I think it started there. You know, you know mm -hmm. I think he saw the way I passed the ball a little bit. You know, I love to pass the ball, and, and obviously he likes to score. So I think yeah. it started then, back in like 97. Oh, wow. Yeah. I remember when he when he was in Miami, he said the best thing that, about you was that he could just put his hand up, and the ball would just be there. Right. And well, you, would, you would always be able to feed him. Yeah, well, it would be repercussions if it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> I think people also forget that it's been 20 years since some of these highlights. And you're one of the few players that's really just still stayed popular throughout all of these years. And it doesn't happen that often. Like I have a page that most of the people on the page are uh, younger than 25. So they've never seen Michael Jordan play. And believe it or not, when I post a Michael Jordan clip, it doesn't do as well as that Jason Williams ultimate mixtape. Why do you think you've kind of stayed relevant more than kind of these other legends over the last 20 years? I'm not sure, man. You have to ask those yeah. crazy people that, but. I just think maybe just the, the passing, you know, yeah. I think nowadays a lot of people can score. A lot of people are scoring. I'm not saying a lot of people can't pass or do this stuff. I mean, that's just passing the ball, but, but I think a lot of people are scoring nowadays and they're not seeing any of this, you know, behind the back, any of that, getting their teammates mm -hmm. excited type thing. I don't know. You have to ask them though. The elbow pass. Everyone loves it. Is that the number one play that everyone asks you about? Probably like, like teach me the elbow. Can you teach yeah. me the elbow pass? To like, like, like I can teach that bitch in two <laughs> days or two minutes. Did you know going into that game that you were going to break it out? Um, I didn't. You know, I've, I've always wanted to. Uh, that was like a perfect, perfect game to do it in. Yeah. I guess like an all-star game. It really doesn't matter. Uh, but man, wish you would have finished it. Me too. What was the reason for breaking it out? Like, is, is the defender have to do something for you to be like, all right, now I'm gonna do it? I don't think the defender has to. I think it's just gotta be set up. It's gotta be a guy on the, on the, on the left side of me because I can't do it the other way. Yeah. Never even try to do it the other way. So it has to be somebody behind me a little bit. And obviously somebody on the right to look at him like you're going that way yeah, first. Yeah, makes sense. I don't think people have also known that you've actually finished this play because you've done it a few times. So that we have some clips from China where you broke it out. And this person didn't get fouled, and they actually finished the play, which was nice. This is this is in China. This is the good old days over there. You're there uh, a lot, right? The Chinese the Chinese fans are great, bro. They love the NBA. People talk about vision, like court vision. Can you teach that? I don't think so. I think I think a lot of it comes with imagination too. I think a lot of, a lot of these kids nowadays are are coming up with trainers and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, that that you know they meet them in the gym for an hour or two, and they tell them like I'm a, all right now that you go do this, you go do that. Now I'm not knocking trainers or anything like that, but but. You know, when I was growing up, I didn't have that trainer, so I'm in the gym doing my own thing, thinking of different drills, different situations, and 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 things like that. So I think imagination is like is slept on nowadays. Yeah, the play is so popular. Are you surprised that no other players really tried to break it out? Mm, probably. You know, I, was, uh, I think a lot of them know how the balls to do it too. Yeah. You know, scared, I'm scared of messing up. I yeah. think I think I had that going for me a little bit. I call it going for me. A lot of people say you got it going against yeah. me, but. But I, I wasn't scared to try anything because I think, you know, I was thinking, yeah, I can, I can uh, uh, pull this off. The behind the back pass against the Grizzlies. Steal by Christie. Christie eludes the defender. Jason Williams behind the back. Pull it. Finger will lead in. Peja Stoyakovic with a bucket. And I mean, Jason threw an absolute blinding. I, I think it, without Stoyakovic being, being ready and having nice hands, I don't think it was caught, you know, because I don't think it was a very good pass. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was off target a little bit. NBA guys should catch it, though. I ain't going to yeah. lie. Do you ever wonder how you would be in this era? Um, sometimes, you know, I wish I could play a couple games, maybe maybe like 15 minutes a night, but that's it. Um, no, if you were in your prime, if uh, you were in your prime. Oh, I think I'd be a lot of fun. Um, I think I think I may I think I'd struggle a little bit just because I don't score enough. I didn't I don't look to score enough. But I felt like you were a capable scorer though. Well, I, and I was a capable chucker. Yeah. 
But wouldn't have, because you were a pass first point guard, wouldn't you have been able to get 20, 25 assists? Because playing with everyone's a scorer now, everyone's a shooter, I feel like you would be able to set up everybody. I think so, if I got the minutes, you know, yeah. depending on all the minutes. But, but yeah, for sure, I mean, it'd be tougher than I think just because at some point I had to look to score. Yeah. Have to. Yeah. Was there anybody you emulated growing up? Not really, man. I, I like to watch all games on TV, you know, whether it be Pepperdine versus Cal Riverside or whatever. You yeah. know, I, I would watch that game. Just you never know. Somebody I might see a move that I like and try to throw that in my bag. But but basketball is my love, bro. I love basketball yeah. and I watch it all the time. Everyone makes the Pistol Pete comparison. Is that fair? Um, I don't. I don't. I can't answer that because I didn't really get to see him play like like I, I wish I could have. Mm -hmm. But but I mean to see some of the highlights and things like that. Um, yeah, I mean, he was good, don't get me wrong now, yeah. I mean, but I, I think our games were different. Yeah, 1,000%. I mean, they were different, but they were both had a little bit of shit with them, but, but different. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you play against John Stockton, are you nervous beforehand at all? Uh, the first time I was, mm -hmm. just because, you know, he never really said a word to me ever. Not high, not by, not, not, not anything, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was kind of intimidating at first, but... There was also a part of me wanting to kill him because he was really good. You know, people you looked up to in general ever say to you like, yo, you've got it? Like, you're, you're... He never did. Like I said, he never said a word to me. I mean, he was... I don't know. I don't know if I did something to him or not. <laughs> but I never really had a chance to do anything yeah. bad to him. But, but no, not really. Not, no, I mean, people told me, no, they like my game and things like that, but nothing to, like, get me on my hot horse, yeah. you know? There's an internet comment, and I want to see if you kind of agree with this. It says... J. Will is arguably the only player ever that was able to combine the street ball game with the NBA game successfully. You think that's fair? No, I don't because I don't, I don't see, I don't say there's a street ball game and a, and a NBA game. I think mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's one game if it's played the right way. I mean, obviously street ball, there's rules to games. The street ball rules are different, I guess, right? Yeah. 1, I mean, they double dribble and, and travel. And they don't really call fouls. Well, yeah, if I could double dribble and do all that, I could do a little bit more than I did. And yeah. I'm sure Allen Iverson and Kobe, and whatever could have done a lot more so that street ball stuff is basketball mm -hmm. so i'm just doing what i do yeah tracy mcgrady said that he never wanted to guard you because he was like i'm gonna end up on a highlight reel did you ever notice that with players when they, when they would have to guard you they'd back up a little bit or they're just a little intimidated because they don't want to end up on a i wouldn't reel? i wouldn't say intimidated and and, and I, I would they would back up a little bit yeah. just 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 to probably that's what the coach wanted him to do, wanted mm -hmm. me to shoot the ball. But mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I'd back up too, you know, and, and, and everyone's backed up on everybody in the yeah. league, bro. So everybody's like, I wouldn't say scared to get crossed over or anything like that, because like I said earlier, everybody's going to get crossed over. Yeah. The tipped pass, so there's this play, you fake him out, then the ball gets tipped and you still complete a behind the back pass. Well, I think I was going behind the back from the get go. Oh, okay. So, so it was just all in one motion. There's no way I could have got the ball up with my left yeah. to the rim. You made a point in one of, one of your interviews. You said there's a difference between a good passer and a willing passer. And can you kind of break that down a little bit? Of course. I mean, a good passer is just like somebody that's always making the right pass or, or making the pass on time, on target. But a willing passer is like, you know, I got a wide open shot, but J.J. Reddick's in the corner. Mm -hmm. That's His percentage is way higher than mine, so you got to be willing to make that extra pass for the team. What was the most underrated part of your game? I think I was misunderstood. I wanted all I wanted to do was win, mm -hmm. whether that was three behind the back passes or, or zero behind the back passes or five points or thirty points. It I just wanted to win. Yeah, you know. It, it seemed like you always played to have fun too. I, that was that was true. I think I think I try to tell people that today in, in every job. You know, your job, their job. Yeah. You got to have fun or, or or what's the point? Exactly. Go find something that you like. Yeah. You know. If you weren't playing basketball, what would you have done? Man, I tell you, I, I had this story of this talk not too long ago. I would honestly be like, I know my personality, bro. I'd be like, I'd love to be like a FedEx driver, UPS driver. No way. I swear, bro. Just like load me up, tell me come back at five o'clock, and I'll be back, bro. Just let me do my thing. Do you think you would have been good? Um, would, you, would you have done behind the back passes with the packages? I don't know. I'd have gotten in trouble with all these door, all these <laughs> yeah. doorbell cameras and things. I mean, videos go viral all the time of FedEx workers playing basketball and we post them and it gets 3 million views, so that maybe that would have been you. Bro, I'd have loved it. I'd <laughs> give these kids buckets. So, you also had a pass against Steve Nash. Like, how did you have such a good grasp of the ball? Do you have, like, just big hands? I do have big hands, but but like I said, man, I, I worked so hard on my handles growing up. Mm -hmm. Like, 
Like I'll always be able to get a, till the day I die, I'll be able to go between my legs, right to left, a hezzy, and get a jump shot off on anybody, I think. What was the best way to guard you? Like in hindsight, what should have teams done to guard you and kind of stop this in a way? Man, I'd have just tried to force me right. I'd have crowded me mm -hmm. and put some pressure on me and some put some hands on me and try to force me one way. Yeah. Was there anybody that guarded you best that sticks out? I don't think like one-on-one. -on -one? Yeah. No, not really because I never really got into like a one-on-one -on -one match, but like teams that I, I hated playing against mm -hmm. were like Bo Outlaw because their team would score a basket. Now he's den his guy's bringing the ball in. He's denying me the ball. I hated yeah. that. Yeah. I want the ball and I want to go. You know, yeah, I hated yeah, that. Yeah. And then like Brian Grant, when he played for uh, Miami, when they yeah. come off a pick and roll, they trapped a pick and roll. Yeah. And I'd always run my knees into his knees. And I hated that, man. I hated it. <laughs> How did you get that creativity? Like I said, I think earlier in, you know, uh, when I was in the gym by myself without trainers, you know, just, you know, picking the ball up, getting trapped at half court, things mm -hmm. like that. Just like put myself in all types of different situations. Mm -hmm. You have a one handed pass against the Pacers. And I found out from Nick, who's here with us, that it's not your favorite pass against the Pacers. No. Well, I mean, that was kind of set up pretty easy. I mean, no one was even guarding Corliss. Yeah. Is this this is your favorite highlight ever? Yeah, that's that's top two, three for sure. I saw the whole thing happen. As soon as I got the ball, I think there was three guys in front of me. Mm -hmm. and, and I knew I was going to be able to get past them. And if Vladi didn't, if all Vladi had to do was just keep running, and he did. Yeah. So I just threw it through there. And it's, I wanted them two to bang into each other, been better. If like Rose, right there, yeah. Rose and Smith would have banged into yeah. each other. But Jalen Rose is my guy, though. You know what sucks a little bit, though? Because in this era, everyone's highlights can be cut within minutes. And now it's just so hard to go to from to 1999, 2000. Those clips are hard to get on YouTube. So I wish you kind of played in this era because I'm sure we would have you more moments like this. Trust me, bro. I wish I was played in this era. Too. Yeah. Trust me. Um, the Lakers. Um, was that a team you just always kind of wanted to play against? Like, because you have a lot of moments against against them. Well, the Lakers were the Lakers, you know, back then. You know, Kobe yeah. and Shaq. I mean, how could you not be ready to go with them? But I don't. I don't I, I don't know how, I, I, when I played for Sacramento, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if we, we could have beat them, yeah. honestly, down deep. I, when they made the trade to get Bibby, mm -hmm. I think they had a chance to beat them. So you, you think that was a good trade? I do, for, for the Kings to get what they wanted to get done yeah. championship wise, yeah. I do. And I'm not just saying it was just because of me, yeah. I'm just saying it was because the whole dynamic of the team changed. There is a lot of people that say they should have never done that trade, actually. Oh, uh, well, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that say they should have and probably yeah. shouldn't have. But honestly, to me, for them to get a championship, mm -hmm. we weren't going to get a championship playing that way, I don't think. Really? And when they changed, I think they got a way better chance to win. Like, what is Kobe doing for you to kind of fake him out that way? Well, I think he kind of helped me out a little bit. But if Nick Anderson would have stopped, I would have been stuck. Because mm -hmm. I, I wasn't thinking, that was like last minute like des desperation yeah. yeah you know that's the only thing i could do or just travel how much of it was planned like you're going down the court you're like i'm gonna jump up and fake this guy out and pass it or well, i think what i wanted to do i wanted to go to cordis williamson from the back but he mm -hmm. I, I look back you see when i look back yeah he kind of i knew he slowed down so he didn't want the ball anymore i don't think mm -hmm. and then i was kind of stuck like nick had to keep going who did you enjoy playing against the most I like playing against Jason Kidd a lot just because I, I watched him a lot growing up. And yeah. he was that number five Dallas Maverick jersey was the only jersey I ever owned growing up. Mm -hmm. You also had another behind the back pass from the three point line. I think it was against the Suns. Bounce pass. Yep. This is a good one too. Everybody, everybody was coming this way because I'm looking this way. And C Webb's going the opposite way. I don't even think he was ready for the ball. Where do you rank this in terms of kind of the the this best play passes, here? yeah. Now this is up there. Cause this is near the three point line and just the ability to fake everyone out and just, man. The, also the opportunity to do that. The crispness of that. Yeah. <laughs> Dang, that thing is crisp. Rondo has this special behind the back fake. And I didn't realize you did something similar. Della Shrimp. He asked me, <laughs> he asked me about it every time he sees me. Really? Now granted, we probably see each other once every eight years. You did it even in high school though. Yeah, like I said, man, I, I, I did all this stuff. Yeah. Teammates also said they never knew when to be ready. They would say to themselves that there is no way he's going to be able to pass the ball from here. Yeah. And you were able to pull it off time and time and again. And this is a good example of that because you hit Vlade in the face. I probably should have shot the ball. He always got mad at me. <laughs> really? Yeah, he did. 
Why? Just, just, just shoot the ball, man. What do you say? Just shoot the ball. Does this remind you of the Rondo move at all? Um, it does. Is it the same move? I don't know. I, I think, I think maybe sometimes he, he brings his like way back around a little bit. Yeah. And how often would you break this out? Uh, it's, it's a pretty effective move because like mm -hmm. I said, my hands are so big I can do it and still pass the ball pretty good with it. Yeah. You also have a poster dunk. Uh, is this your only poster dunk? Well, it's probably the only one they caught on, on film. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I've got plenty. Okay. You know, we have to, we have to, we have to reach in the archives though. This lot. was a foul too, and one. <laughs> Your reaction. Yeah. <laughs> I've never well, I was, seen I was mad excited. at the coach before because the coach took me out early in the, in the first half and then put me back in with like two minutes to go or something like that. Yeah. I didn't want to go back in. Then, oh, so you were mad. And that had to be the first play, yeah. So this is Mario Ellie. My bad, dog. <laughs> what did you enjoy more, dunking on somebody or breaking their ankles? Um, definitely breaking ankles because the dunks, that was probably maybe, you know, there was a couple more, like I said earlier. Yeah. You have an ultimate mix that always goes viral. Have you seen this before? Probably once. What was your favorite move? Cause you're going crazy right here on this play too. Yeah. Oh man, I don't, favorite one, man, it's gotta be a pass mm -hmm. of some sort. Shaq always said he wanted to play with you and he got to play with you. Was there any other guys that would walk up to you before a game or after a game and say like, yo, we gotta get you because you would set me up? My man Vince Carter for sure. Yes. We tried to play together forever. Well, we finally got to play together a little bit in Orlando, but. Mm -hmm. Not during their primes. No. Nah. That would have been... That would have been fun. You were also an underrated shooter, too. In the 06 year, did you shoot like 40% from three? I don't know. I never really got into numbers, man. I, I think I never really was a serious shooter. You know, I didn't take mm -hmm. it serious. So this, you have the nice no-look pass. And then what is it? Just staying ready so you can get the steal? Well, I knew Forson C. Webb was by Larry Hughes. He couldn't throw the note. And that was, I think it was Mookie Blaylock. You remember yeah. Mookie Blaylock? I do not know who See, that is. Man, that's crazy, man. So I grew up in Miami. That 06 Heat team was kind of my childhood and kind of the reason why I fell in love with basketball. What was it like to throw lobs to D Wade? Because he was, man, he was young here. It was great. I mean, like I said about Moss earlier, you just throw it anywhere near the rim and they're going to get it. Yeah. It, it, the trade from Memphis to Miami, though, Shaq, he went to Pat Riley and said, hey, I want Jason Williams on the team. Was he in communication with you? Like, yo, I'm trying to get you onto the Heat? For sure. I mean, we live, we live next to each other here in Orlando and he mm -hmm. came over like, uh, the day before and was like, asked me if I wanted to play for the Heat. Yeah. I was like, well, sure, you know, get it done. I didn't think, you know, I always thought he was full of it, but he got it done. Yeah. Who was your favorite person to throw lobs to? Man, that's a tough question. I mean, I played with Stro Miles Swift. You don't remember Stro Miles Swift in Memphis. No. Man, he could jump to the moon. Um, Pal Gasol, mm -hmm. catch some lobs too. And then favorite memories when you think about this 06 Heat team? Because there was a lot of characters. You had Antoine Walker, oh, yeah. Gary Payton, Shaq, Alonzo Mourning, D. Wade, James Posey. Any memories that stick out? I mean, the great winning, winning, winning in Dallas, man. Yeah. That, that arena was great. And, you know, Mark Cuban tried to tell Pat Riley we're not allowed to bring any champagne in there. Well, really? Well, yeah, we brought double. <laughs> uh, we had a good time that night. Also, when you're on a team with Shaq and D. Wade, are you just looking to feed them the entire time? Like, what's the mentality? I think, I think, I think you got to pick and choose because you can't just get caught up in just trying to feed Shaq and D Wade the whole whole time because mm -hmm. you know other guys will just get stagnant or whatever. But, but if two or three trips go down the floor and Shaq hasn't touched the ball, he'll let you know that it's, <laughs> it's his turn. Yeah. By the way, was Pat Riley as tough as he seems? Um, <clears throat> no, I don't think so. I mean, uh, as long as you did what he wanted you to do, I mean, how tough could it be, you know? I yeah, mean, I mean, but he loved his fines. He does. He did love his fines, but he was cool about the fines, you know? He would try to give the fines back at the end of the year, whether oh, it was really? shoot, like half quarters or, or, you know, everybody make three in a row, uh, three pointers, like Shaq make three and get his fines back. Some Wait, Shaq made threes in practice? No, no, I'm just saying like oh. at the end, the end of the year when the, when the fine money was being yeah. uh, given back out. I don't think that's uh, known about Pat at all. Well, don't tell nobody. <laughs> It's too late now. Was this your best season? Statistically? Yeah. Mm, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm going to say it's my best season no matter what, just because we won. Yeah. Like I said, that's all that matters to me. And, and you ask all 15 guys on that roster, that's the same, same mentality. What was the biggest difference between J. Will in Miami versus Jason Williams in Sacramento and Memphis? I just think the, the, uh, the way we played, our team, my teammates were different. You know, we didn't we weren't running up and down the floor. Like you said, we, we had to stop and, and, and play half court sets to get Shaq and D Wade the ball. Whereas in Sacramento, heck, the best shot may be a rebound, one pass three. 
Yeah. That might be the best shot where, you know, here in Miami, D Wade and Shaq need to touch the ball. Yeah. What did you learn? Because people talk about the game slowing down. So, like, what did you learn from your rookie year to this point? Definitely, you know, to, like I said, early on in my career, I, I, I really wasn't thinking championship. Like, when I got here to, to Miami, that's all mm -hmm. it was about, you know, like, I don't think we were, we were, we weren't gonna be able to get by the Lakers with that team yeah. early on. And then the 06 championship, my childhood, this is, this is it for me. This was yeah. like peak for us mm -hmm. and obviously peak for you. Yes, sir. When you're down 02 though, I think most series, especially in the finals, feel over. For sure. What was different about your team or did something happen that gave you guys confidence that you can come back? No, I don't think anything just, I don't think anything happened. I think it's just, we just I know it sounds cliche, but we just got to get, when you're down 0-2, you got to get one win. Yeah. Whether it's at home or on the road, you got to get that one win. And once we get that one win, then, you know, it starts a little bit of momentum that way, and then God forbid we get another one. Yeah. And now it's just a three-game series. And is it true that even though when, when you guys were down 0-2, Pat Riley said, we will win the finals in six games. We're going to win four straight, he bring did. one suit, he bring did. one tie. Only let us bring one, and... I don't even think we wore it. I think we all wore sweatsuits, to tell you the truth. <laughs> uh huh. But but Pat Riley was real. And what was it like watching D Wade go off like that? D Wade, I mean, D Wade's top three teammates I've ever had yeah. my whole life. You know, not just in the NBA, my whole life. Um, D Wade couldn't happen to a better person or a better guy. You guys did a jersey swap this year, which was cool too. That was like a nostalgic moment for us. Like I said, I think I think D Wade, man, he top three. Two guard ever, maybe, mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, I, um, I would agree too. And, and, a, and a, a better person. Because that's why that team was a little bit more special, kind of like that 08 Celtics team too. Like all those veterans kind of come together at the end, try to like just win one. Yeah, I think it and was And you were good. able to pull it off. Yes, and then Pat Riley leading the way. Who, yeah, you know, but yeah. Who else better to do it than him? And then winning, is it exactly what you thought it would be like? Oh, winning, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to explain. People ask like what it was like, no, mm -hmm. it's, it's you can't, I mean, you can explain it a little bit, but, but you got to be there to yeah. feel it. You get yeah. something poured on your head or something like yeah. that, you know. If somebody was dry, we were walking around in the, in, in, in the locker room at the end of the game there. If I was walking around, parents, girlfriends, wives. Yeah. If, if yeah. you were dry, you were getting something poured yeah. for sure. Did it feel good for you, though, because you were able to kind of silence critics? Maybe people said you were too flashy. Maybe, you, oh, the way he plays isn't right. For sure. I mean, it, it felt good a little bit, but... But at the same time, man, I'm not worried about what them people were saying back. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. it, it it takes it takes too much energy to be bitter at somebody. You know, so yeah. to hell with them. Last couple of clips. You have this bounce pass from half court that you also did in Asia. <laughs> Is there any moment where you would have tried that in an NBA game? Um, I, yeah, for sure. But yeah, yeah, I'd try it. Yeah. But it had to be a certain guy. I mean, like Vince Carter, maybe. Vince Carter, Stromile Swift, he could fly. Everyone in Orlando talks about Jason Williams plays at YMCA or JCC or whatever pickup court you're at, and they say he just drops 50 on everybody and then leaves. Well, is this true? Um, I'm gonna say no. It's not true. Well, my team will probably get a win, though, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to drop 50. Okay. I probably could drop 50. I wouldn't be able to play golf for the next week, though. Yeah. Be too sore. How often do you lose? Not often. But I got a good team, though. It's not that everybody thinks it's me. It's not me. I'm like. I heard Nick's very good. I'm like the third or fourth guy on the team, you know what I mean? So. I feel like you're being humble. I'm not. I'm not. I'm really, I mean, when it comes to, like, you know, scoring and getting buckets, I, I'm not that guy. Yeah. Do you talk trash? Sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> You're still able to do everything you kind of did 20 years ago. And that's gotta be cool to see that. Like you, just like you said earlier, like I'm still gonna always be able to go between my legs, do a no look pass. Man, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I don't know if it has to do with me mm -hmm. or these kids today just don't know how to play, bro. I'm <laughs> telling you. These kids really don't have any idea how to play the game the yeah. right way. They just trying to go get buckets and they can do that. Yeah. They can go get buckets, they can go dunk, they can mm -hmm. do all that. But man, to play the right way, it's, it's different. It's not just about getting buckets. Has the defense gotten worse overall? Like not even just a pickup, like in, in the NBA? You know, I don't know if the defense has gotten worse or it's just 
people just forgetting about it, you know, yeah. or, or more worried about offense. If I get 30 in high school, I'm going to college. Or if I get 25 in college, I'm going to the league. Yeah. That's what people think. And yeah. I think that's bad for the game yeah. because it's the total opposite. I want to say thank you so much. Oh, thanks for this having me, This was so much fun. I mean, it was kind of going through memory lane, but also kind of going through my childhood. Because it was it. so much fun. Thank you for the 06 championship. I will always remember that. My boy Naki was here too. He's going to remember that too. Yes, sir. Um, but this was a lot of fun. You have all the highlights in the world, so it just felt right to do it. My man, I appreciate it. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for having bro. me, bro.